Let's see, the main, first main business meeting of the 79th uh, World Science Fiction Convention will be in order. And it is 10... 10.04. Uh, you should be aware the meeting is being recorded. Uh, your voice and image may appear in that recording. Um, here is the list of officers, uh, the list in the agenda, which you hopefully have a copy of, which was distributed uh, the, the, the entrance, uh, is incorrect. This is the correct list of officers. Uh, I'm Donald Eastlake, the chair. Uh, the deputy is Kent Bloom, sitting in the front row. Um, to my right, Todd Dashoff, our timekeeper. Uh, to the left is uh, Janice Murphy, the secretary, and Lena Deneroff, the assistant secretary, and also the WISFIS division head. Uh, back uh, to my left is Lisa Hayes, the videographer, and uh, here is Martin Payne, our fine, fine, sorry, fine, our floor manager. So uh, this is just a repeat of the recording information. Uh, it's being live streamed, and it will also be uploaded to the YouTube uh, Worldcon events channel. Uh, thanks to Deccon One for funding and Wizards Tower Press for video editing software. Uh, <coughs> uh, hopefully you've signed the attendance sheets that were at the entrance. Uh, there are business meeting attendee ribbons, uh, which I believe were at the entrance. There's more at the head table. Come up and get one here. Uh, when you speak, you should come to a microphone. If necessary, a microphone will be taken to you if you have uh, mobility problems. Um, when you do, you should note that when people speak, they're not actually constrained to being uh, factual, or at least certainly not to what you think are correct is correct. But all speech must be civil or polite. This slide is on procedures for appealing, appeals of the ruling of the chair, so I won't really go into this until it happens the first time. So this is the first main business meeting. <coughs> uh, I'll go over what happened at the preliminary business meeting, but uh, <coughs> excuse me. the main influence it has on this is that we did set debate time limits for the business, uh, main business meeting uh, items of business. These can, of course, be extended. And it's also possible to uh, produce a cutoff debate. Uh, let's take two thirds vote. Um, let's see, this is, uh, so we do have the uh, elections to the Market Protection Committee at this session. Uh, we have, there's some, uh, we don't have any business that was supposed to be done yesterday, so there isn't really any business not completed yesterday. <clears throat> then we have constitutional amendments passed on from previous years uh, for re-ratification or ratification. And I'll explain, explain the re-ratification and new constitutional amendments. Uh, so the re-ratification is that there are two constitutional amendments that were previously passed with a provision that they would automatically expire. So we had a few years of trial with them. Uh, but they would automatically expire and be removed from the Constitution unless we re-ratified them at this uh, business meeting. So <clears throat> I'll point those out when we get to them. We did have uh, committee reports at the preliminary business meeting, uh, including the report from the Mark Protection Committee, which was received at the preliminary business meeting. <coughs> And, uh, excuse me. We do have five incumbents that are running and uh, two additional nominees, Nicholas and White. Three. Hang on, where's the, I just printed them, here they are. So this is the list of nominees. Okay. Ah. And I'm printing some more ballots. So. And I misspelled Judy's name. Judy, so the list of ballots, uh, we have here ballots, which will be handed out. 
And people listed on the ballot, I as well read that, are Nicholas White, Donald Eastlake, Dave McCarty, Linda Denneroff, Joni Dashoff, Mike Lulmuth, uh, Judy Bemis, John Coxon, and Steve Boucher. Steve Boucher. So uh, the procedure will be to hand these out, and people should uh, use preferential balloting the same way as is done for the uh, Hugos and the site selection. And then the uh, tellers will retire and count these uh, and report back later in the meeting so we can continue with other business. And I apologize, Judy, apparently the S got moved from your name and... No worries. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> it says Judy C. Beamy, but it's Bemis. But the S is on the bottom of the... Of the but there is an S. Yes, there's an extra S at the bottom, which is... It's, it's my computer. It's just crazy. Uh, blame the computer. No. Uh, blame the computer. <laughs> okay, so... Story and I'm sticking uh, to it. I'd like to appoint... Sharon Sparsky, the uh, as chief teller, uh, assisted by Jill Eastlake, um, and uh, we need to distribute the ballots. Have one ballot for each There's person. some more here. Okay, you should keep one and give me the rest, and I'll hand them. Keep one. Okay. So uh, these need to be distributed. Do we need to go past so did I have one? I took you. I gave mine to him. So okay. So you need. Oh, when he comes, when he's finished. Yeah. I passed one over. So are we only going from one to six, or do you want us to vote? Oh no, you can you can number as you should give a, a, a well you 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 don't. It's one to six. Right. I mean, if there's only one person you care about, you can do a bullet ballot and just. Put a, a one or a star by one person, but then if that, when that person's eliminated, you no longer have any influence. By giving your preferential order, you have the maximum effect on the results, because uh, whenever your, any, of your, any of your higher preferences are eliminated, then your remaining preferences will still continue to influence the remaining selection. The, there are seats, six seats to fill, and more nominees, so uh, some people will not be selected. Kevin Stanley, he, him. Honorable Chair, I believe it is the yes, no question. If I step back further, it actually di disappears from the recording we discovered, okay? Um, the yes, no question is, are you allowed to number your choices all the way down to seven, I believe the total? Nine. Nine. Can you keep numbering them all the way down so you fill in every space with a number? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Honorable Chair. So. Are there more ballots? There, there are more ballots over there. So when you've completed your ballot, I recommend that you take it and fold it once uh, so that it's two thicknesses of paper. Uh, I don't know if the tellers are ready to collect the ballots no, no, yet. No, just showing them. But, uh, but you need to speak louder. Ballot's here. Ballot's here. Okay. I, I, I know everyone needs a ballot, oh. except for like the first three rows. Right. I can print more if we need to. We have plenty of paper. And I can fix Judy's name. We do have a printer up here on the stage. Yes. That's there. And I, I know I'm getting fouled.
Anybody else have a ballot that they need to, that they've completed, that needs to be submitted? Just like one person. One person over there, maybe, in the middle. Raise your hand if you have a ballot to give to. Oh, okay, all right. I believe all the ballots have been collected. Uh, okay. Anybody else got a ballot that's filled in? I declare voting to be closed. Okay. Last ballot. Going once. Going twice. Going three times. Okay. <laughs> My assistant there. I don't know. This is the, the official 
wisp of scalpel that I believe was used at opening ceremonies. So I don't know about the people here who seem to be able to pick it up, but anyway, if you were at opening ceremonies. It's like Thor's <laughs> hammer. Anyway. <laughs> Only the worthy can pick it up. Right. We are wispus. Moving right along. Powerful. So the tellers will report back with the results later in this meeting, one hopes. You know, Don. Yeah, what? Only, only those with this badge can pick it up. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is continuing essentially on report of what happened at the preliminary business meeting. There were reports received from the Mid-Picking and fly specking Committee and the Worldcon Runner's Guide Editorial Committee. Uh, at the time, there were some questions about uh, where that guide was. So that is actually linked from the DISCON 3 with this uh, information and also from wispus.org, but I also looked up the URL and put it on this slide. So it's not too obscure, uh, I hope, and uh, there it is. Um, there were also reports from uh, the uh, Foley Committee, the Hugo Ward Study Committee, and the Non-Transferability Committee and uh, the first two committees were uh, continued, and the third, at its request, was not continued. And uh, everybody was reappointed, except for one person who uh, requested that they not be reappointed to the Hugo Study Committee. We also received financial reports uh, from past, uh, present, and I guess uh, future world funds that have, uh, that are required to report under the Constitution. These are financial reports, pretty much. We did not receive one from Worldcon 75, and uh, we did not receive one from the SpikeCon. The NASFICs are also required to report, and we still haven't received those, I believe. Uh, there is a place in the agenda for standing rule changes, but there were none this year, so. <clears throat> so we now come to constitutional amendments. So the first two items are the best series uh, and the Lodestar Award. The best series being a Hugo, and uh, Lodestar being a non-Hugo award that is uh, administered by the uh, society through the conventions. And these were originally adopted with a provision that they would, lap, they would be removed from the Constitution unless they were re-ratified uh, this year. So uh, this is if you go to page 29 in your agenda, that gives the text for the best series. And uh, the, this is a text which is actually already in the Constitution, but uh, it would be removed if we do not ratify it again this year. So we set a debate time limit of six minutes. Does anybody wish to debate the re-ratification of this provision for best series? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor, please raise. Yeah, what? Order. Ah, sorry. Uh, go right ahead. Come on, come up to the microphone, please. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Ah, I forgot oh, to do, I to forgot to do several thought. things. Okay. Uh. Are you speaking in favor or against? Against. So. Oh, Dave, Dave Wallace. And just want to say, I feel that while the idea of the best series is a good one, the current implementation is not ideal. Uh, it's, it doesn't seem to have realized the maker's original idea of honoring series that are not things that come up for uh, the best series things. It's something that takes a lot of time uh, I personally have not felt I've had time to fairly evaluate any series that I haven't read otherwise for the Hugos. And certainly the whole timeline of what's eligible or not is a real mess when you come to the retro Hugos. So while I'm not opposed to the best series in principle, and I've enjoyed having some of that stuff in the Hugo packet, I must say that I feel like we should probably reject it at this time and have those who favor a best series try and come up with a different proposal for future years. Thank you. Is there a speech in favor of re-ratification? Can you come up with your name, 
see, can we see your name, name badge? Yeah. It, no, I can't see it from there, I'm sorry, really. I don't. Rafe Richards, thank you. Mr. Chairperson, fellow members, Rafe Richards, he, him. On the matter of best series, um, to answer the previous speaker, I would say that if the implementation is not correct, but he approves of the general idea, then surely a better plan would be to re-ratify it and then propose amendments to change how it alters so that we do not then have a minimum of two years without something that is perhaps not perfect, because what in this life is ever perfect, but still gives authors the opportunity to receive validation for their works. The best series recognizes at its core the idea that particularly in speculative fiction that there is literary merit in a body of work beyond individual items within that body. It is something that in this genre above perhaps any other is unique to this genre. The idea of a long running series, which, well, yes, I think you have caught the essence of my meaning, so I'm going to stop attempting to improvise this speech. Thank you. Is there another speech against re ratification? Right now, we're not picking the best series this year. Uh, your, oh. your name? Sorry. Ben Yallo. Uh, ben Yallo, he, him. Uh, we're not picking the best series this year. We're picking about the 18th best series because we've got a whole bunch of series that are no longer eligible. Some of them are no longer eligible permanently. Some of them are no longer eligible temporarily until the authors produce a few more volumes. But the elimination rules basically say that right now we're not picking the best series at, that had books out this year. And in the future, we will keep eliminating more and more and more series. And I'd like to think that we're only giving the Ugos out to the best. Time against has expired. Uh -huh. uh, speech in favor of re-ratification. State your name. Yep, Joshua Cronengold, he, him. Uh, the previous speaker's uh, big core point was complete and utter nonsense. Uh, meanwhile, um, no, best series isn't perfect. Uh, the primary thing, um, issue with it is that um, something can be nominated for best series at the same time the works in question are nominated for best novel. However, and we, we can fix that with amendment as we should. But in meanwhile, best series was intended not only to award the best series, which it does, but also to um, provide a safety valve and take things off the best um, novel uh, that can't win, but can compete in best series. And you know what? It does. We should keep it, and then we should fix it. Time four has expired. Uh, debate time having expired, we'll proceed to a vote. Those in favor of re-ratification, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. Division, okay. We will uh, do a serpentine vote. Uh, all those in favor of re-ratification, please stand.
There being 35 in favor and 30 against, the motion to re-ratify passes, and the best series will remain in the Constitution. Congratulations on being able to read the room. <laughs> um, so when I came in here, I had some notes as the things I wanted to say at the beginning of the meeting, uh, which I somehow ignored in my state. So for the indulgence of the meeting, I'd like to go back and uh, Say a few things that I planned, had planned to say earlier. Um, one is if something is happening in the process here, the, the parliamentary procedure, and you don't understand it, or there's, you want to know how to accomplish something, feel free to make a, ask for help, uh, usually in the form of a parliamentary inquiry. Um, my style of presiding is usually to kind of forge ahead and not wait a long time for people to object or things like that. However, uh, just because I have begun uh, a following business item, you can still object to the previous one until I've sort of completed stating the, the next item of business. So don't be afraid to uh, interrupt me to do that. Uh, and also, uh, I think people have done pretty well so far, but I think the proceedings benefit from some level of formality. So in principle, at least, remarks uh, for and against the motion should be addressed to the chair, even though you're facing the audience. And uh, you should not normally refer to other members by their names, but by in some, like the previous speaker or something like that. I'm planning to uh, have a brief bio break at around 11.30. Uh, we'll see how things are going at that point. And uh, one last item, uh, I was asked to uh, make a, a brief uh, announcement uh, commemorating uh, Jack Chalker. This, this year would have been his 77th birthday as the inventor of the word SMOF and somebody who frequented uh, business meetings of the society. Birthday? Jack Chalker. This Jack year Chalker. would have been his. I can't hear you. I can't imagine they can hear you. So, uh, <laughs> I wonder what actually appeared SMOF. there to oh. start with. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> what, for what purpose does the member rise? Quiet, please. Microphone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, my apologies if that all came out of order, but we can now, uh, I now plan to proceed with the uh, established agenda. So, the next item of business is uh, E2 on page 30 of your agenda, which is re ratification of the Lodestar Award. Uh, the text shown there is already in the Constitution, and uh, really the question is, should it be re-ratified or should it be sunset and removed from the Constitution? Uh, are there, uh, is there anybody who wishes to debate this question? Yes? yes? Yeah, come up to the microphone if you can, or, okay. Uh, or we can get a microphone to you, whichever. It's better if you can come to the... Ever Whitley, she, her. Uh, I am against re ratifying this amendment if memory serves, and if it doesn't, I'm sure you will all correct me. Uh, this has historically been a low uh, turnout vote getter, uh, as previous versions of it had. I believe NESPA had it as a trial category, and I think we've proved that there really isn't 
uh, a need for this award and it should be eliminated. The speaker in favor? Yeah. I should perhaps mention that this is not a Hugo, although awarded by the Society. Hi, Katie Rask, she, her. So, um, in fact, I actually have some uh, numbers to respond to that uh, particular statement. I only have uh, numbers from the 2020 nomination. That's all I had time to get this morning. But I just want to give you an idea of the nominations and how many people are actually nominating. So, um, in 2020, uh, 1,023 people nominated for this award. And then if you look comparatively, the Astounding Award only got 907. Graphic Story got 998. Editor Short Form got 877. Editor Long Form got 744. And Fan Scene only got 653. So in fact, the Lodestar Award got almost twice Fan Scene. So if these other uh, organizations or categories deserve to exist, then so does the Lone Star. star. <clears throat> and I think this is proof that people do want to vote for this award. Are there further speeches against every ratification? Seeing none, are there further speeches in favor? One back. back. Okay. Uh, in back. Just letting me know. Yes, yes. Oh, we lost the mic in the back? I don't know. We have the mic right there. Right? Yeah. Uh, young adult fiction is the gateway drug by which we all enter science fiction and fantasy, and it should be recognized. It may not be appropriate to recognize it as a Hugo, but it certainly deserves to be recognized. And I say that as a member of the Lone Star Committee. Uh, further speeches in favor? Seeing none, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. further speeches on this motion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote on the re-ratifying the Lodestar Award. You got, what, you, you have, oh, you oh. want to speak? Yeah, go, go right ahead. ahead. <laughs> Sorry. So I don't have the novel numbers. Martin Pine, he, him. So I don't have the novel numbers, but I did look up the 2019 nominating statistics. 2019, because it was a bit more of a normal year than 2020 for obvious reasons. Lodestar received about as many nominations as semi-prosine, so there is obvious interest in nominations. Motion to call the question. Uh, is there a motion move to call the question? Is there anybody who wish to still debate? Uh, is there a second? Second. Moved and second to call the question. Uh, the procedure is, uh, we have special procedure. All those who still wish to speak, please raise your hand. Uh, I don't see anybody raise, uh, oh, one, okay, a few people, uh, sorry. Uh, we'll then proceed to a vote on calling the question. Uh, it requires two thirds. All those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hand. Thank you, all those opposed? The ayes have it, the question is called. We'll proceed to a vote on re-ratifying the Lodestar Award. All those in favor of re-ratification, please raise your hand. Thank you, all those opposed? 
Thank you. The ayes have it, and the Lone Star Award is re-ratified and will remain in the Constitution. Next item of business is E3, also on page 30 of your agenda. A uh, simple change to clarify that the Worldcon's authority with respect to awards, Hugo and the non-Hugos we give, uh, are only, uh, with what purpose does the member rise? Yeah, we better, parliamentary inquiry, is that good? Uh, point of parliamentary inquiry? Yeah. I have a motion I'd like to make. Uh, would this be a good time or should we schedule it? Uh, can I see the motion or? Sure. type it and make 200 copies. Uh, this is a motion submitted uh, to relate to uh, site selection information on ballots. Okay, uh, and uh, I'm willing to admit this as uh, a privileged motion. Um, so this is, I had not finished stating the question on item E3. So uh, we could consider this at this point could in we, the agenda. Could we move to postpone it till we finish this so that I can type it up and make 200 copies for people? Sure, it's uh, the uh, assistant secretary should request screen. that we be able to make uh, copies that can be distributed to people. Uh, how long would that take? Of, just put it on the screen. I, mean, uh, I could type it in and put it on the screen, yeah, I guess. Okay, uh, is that okay? Do you want to? Do you want uh, to? I'm, I'll type it in after you do that. Yes? Well, that's not a real foreign thing, but go ahead. <laughs> is this working? There we go. My name is Terry Neal, uh, she, her. And when people bring new amendments up to the meeting, don't they have to print their own 200 copies as opposed to having the con do it for them? Is that a, that uh, applies to non-privileged business. It does not apply to privileged business. It's always, of course, better to have copies available to everybody, and everybody needs to know what they're voting on. They have a right to know what they're voting on. Uh, There's another hand up in the back. We have copies. Oh, oh okay, there are, there are copies. Are they, uh, they, they, the makers of the motion say they have copies, but there was a point of personal privilege somebody does not have a copy, so perhaps the makers would like to distribute that copy, those copies, uh, uh, or something of that, but so some people question, could as, question assist them. Chair. Yes? Does this time come out of this? No, no, okay. we, we hadn't quite, I hadn't finished, I didn't call for debate or anything. So basically this is just free time? Yes, this is. We're, we're in free fall. So do, we, do I renumber, I guess we have to renumber the, okay. I'll do that later. Somebody will do it. Just wanted to make sure. Scorecard, get your scorecard. Can't tell the players without a scorecard. It doesn't matter. I mean, who, who submits it doesn't matter. Who signs it matters. Okay, so I need a copy to. Well, it was a small typo, but other Where? Where? Origin apostrophe S. Yes. Okay. Terry, can you bring some copies up here, please? Oh, okay. oh, all right. So. <coughs> and we have coffees here. Oh, these I guess I need one copy back. Don't you need a copy back? back? Yeah. Is that a constitutional yeah. amendment? Or no, it's a, it's a resolution. Board. Okay. So this is a... Resolution? Are there people who still need copies? 
Anybody who anybody who still needs a copy of this? It looks like it has been distributed. This is the nature of a resolution uh, of the business meeting, and uh, my determination is that because uh, sites. Yes. Order. Let's see. Order. Order, please. Hi. Right. This is a resolution, so uh, we can adopt this. Uh, and uh, my determination is that this is a. I see somebody waving stuff back there. Is it? What's the deal? <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, we can pull the mic out, maybe. Well. Winton Matthews. I'm confused of where we are on the agenda. I okay. thought we were doing E3, and this seems to be something completely different. I would have, be happy to clarify that. We were uh, was in the process of stating the question on E3 when uh, I was asked whether this would be in order, and it's my determination that this is a privileged motion uh, relating to site selection, and site selection is uh, ongoing at this time. So the uh, Time is of the essence, or maybe of the essence, for the consideration of this motion. So I believe it can be allowed now uh, in the agenda. Thank you. Uh, the original is missing an apostrophe in. Uh, it's also missing. It's also got or instead of and. So I hate to tell them that, but no, that's requirements. No. That. Oh, I see. Or. Okay, or is fine. Not, but yeah, the or is fine. You're right. I didn't get to the end of it. Um, so this, uh, there is a provision in the Constitution, 4.4.1. Uh, uh, the Constitution is in the program book, which you, uh, souvenir book, which you should have a copy of. Uh, this relates to that. And uh, I guess that uh, this, uh, we need, we should uh, continue. I guess the, uh, uh, we can set a time limit for this, or we could uh, just see whether there's uh, controversy on this. Uh, I would uh, suggest a time limit of uh, eight minutes. Uh, is there any objection to that? We can always. Hearing none, does anybody wish to uh, speak to this motion? Yes. Pardon me? No. He was working two seconds ago. Ah. Tim Sejual, I'm the current site selection administrator. Section 4.4.1 is somewhat ambiguous with, re with respect to what is required of the voter. The way it, it, to me, it could be read either as the ballot is required to have four items. I think it's the name, the address, uh, the signature, and the member number. Or it could be that the voter has to include that information on the ballot. I, in introducing this motion, am seeking the advice and recommendation of the business meeting as to what the determination is for this um, section. Are there uh, further speech against? Mr. Yell? Uh, I don't know. Uh, sorry, sorry. You, you, uh, I recognize. Are you I'm against. Okay. Um, four four one Name. is really. Uh, sorry. The mic's not working. It was. Yeah. Ben Yellow, he him. Four four one is incredibly clear. It says site selection ballots 
shall include name, signature, address, and membership number spaces to be filled in by the voter. It doesn't say how the voter has to fill it in. It doesn't provide any qualifications. It simply says there must be spaces. We are now trying to change the rules on the fly. Voters read the Constitution, and we're now saying, oh no, their interpretation doesn't matter. If we want to change the Constitution to require a specific form, we should change the Constitution. We should not change it for this meeting. Is there a speech in favor of the resolution? Sure. If there's no speeches in favor, go ahead. Yeah, I think you were still recognition first anyway. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. An amendment is not a speech against in general. I believe the problem. Oh, sorry. Joni Brill, Dashoff, she, her, whatever. Um, I believe the problem is in the instruction field on the ballot and a change in worldwide usage between street slash postal address versus email address as primary point of contact. So this year's physical ballot had a line that said address, then city, and state, and some people did not understand that address line within meant the street address. So it was a failure of instructions. What I would propose is that that address field in the Constitution specifies street slash postal address and or email address as two separate data fields. Uh, that's the speech against, I guess. Uh, speech in favor? Yes. Parliamentary inquiry, was that, has there been an amendment moved in our, if so are we then debating the amendment? No, there, there was no second. Uh, there's a, Terry Neal, she, her. I entirely agree with Ben, and I want you to take note of that because it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> uh, we absolutely cannot change the rules on voting in the middle Please state your point of, of voting. Excuse me, quiet. Please state your point of order. Kevin Stanley, he, him. I do believe the previous speech was uh, declared to be a speech against. Is that correct? Yes. Therefore, the next speech should be in favor. And it should be. And there were people attempting to seek recognition to speak in favor of the motion. That's fair. OK. Thank you. Uh, speech in favor? Yes. Lou? Well, wait a minute. Ben spoke against. Judy and Joni spoke against. We haven't had any speeches in favor. I didn't hear it. Uh, is there a precise wording for this amendment? Can you provide it for the secretary? I mean, I. Mr. Chairman, yes. I believe this is a point of order. I believe that that is uh, not germane to the actual resolution because the instructions are not part of the resolution and because uh, nothing we do change in the, in the instructions. Uh, is going to have any effect on this year's site selection. I, uh, I find the point of order well taken and that the amendment is not germane to the main motion, which has to do with what should be done, uh, the, what's the opinion of the business meeting concerning the uh, existing situation this year. Um, so the next thing would be normally be a speech in favor of this resolution. Uh, what is your point of order? I am now confused about this. Uh, Elspeth Kovar, I am now completely confused about what this is. If it's a request for information, this does, does not go into the Constitution. It's on the amendment. 
It's a resolution. It's a resolution. The wisdom okay. meeting is just expressing its opinion. Okay, so it is not going to go into the Constitution. It is only an opinion for this year. That's what I said yes at the very beginning. Look, I, we in back the uh, speech. No, no, behind you. Yes. Speech in favor? Correct. Yeah, the, the Constitution, the const Lou Walkoff, what the? Um, the Constitution says what should be in there. It doesn't say what should we do if it isn't in there. The site selection people have asked us what should we do, have asked us what should we do for ones that aren't in there. This is a point the Constitution doesn't address. They're asking for our guidance. Let's give it to them. Speech against. Uh, well, I believe uh, Harry Ann was first. Is this against? Yes, this is against. Uh, uh, were we going to allow Ms. O'Neill? You called for against. We're going against. Is that against? We're going against. She has to recognition again. Go oh, ahead. Okay. Am I, proceed. Am I, am Please I'm proceed, on. yes. Uh, it, it seems to me that the purpose for asking for this information is to, let, to allow the site selection administrators to decide that the voter is eligible. Uh, if there is enough information on the ballot to decide the voter is eligible, they should count the ballot. Um. Is it, uh, what, yeah. No, you question of privilege. What is your question of privilege? Uh, question of privilege. Am I correct in stating that members should remain seated b during a previous speech if they and then stand to make a motion after that speech is finished? It's more like a parliamentary inquiry, but you are entirely correct. Uh, what purpose does this member arise? Go ahead. So what, what purpose are you standing up for? What do you want to do? I would like to remove origins at. I would like to remove the lowercase address after origins since that is simply duplicating the capitalized address earlier in the sentence and I would suggest that membership number should be at the start of the list as the country of origin places no requirements on the membership number only the name signature and address are influenced by the requirements of the country Elliot Mitchell he him is there any objection to deleting the second occurrence of the address? That seems like it's just an editorial. I'm asking if there's any objection. Oh, I see. Country. To deleting the second occurrence of the address. Hearing none, it's just an editorial change, which I believe is correct. The other move was to move membership number to the beginning of the list. Uh, move membership number to the beginning of the list? I don't see the point of that exactly. Is there a, uh, anybody else wish to do that? Seeing, hearing none, it fails for lack of a second. Oh, this is a second for moving membership number to the beginning of the list. Okay. Okay. So membership uh, number, name, signature, or address. That okay. meets the country that meets of origin. country of origin's requirements. address requirements. Take out the second address. Second address has been removed by unanimous consent. Thank you. Okay. Anybody wish to debate the motion of the moving of the membership number to the beginning of the list? The ver current version is resolved that it is the sense of the WISPAS business meeting that any site selection ballot that does not contain a name, signature, membership number, or address that meets the country of origin's requirements should be counted as no preference. The, this is the, the, the current version as amended by deleting the second occurrence of the term address. The currently is a amendment moved and seconded to move membership number to the beginning so it would just change the beginning so it would say it contains a membership number, name, signature, or address that meets the country of origin's requirements. Um, so we're currently debating moving membership number to the beginning of the list. Does anybody wish to speak in debate? Seeing none, all those in favor of moving membership number to the beginning of the list, please raise your hand. Thank you, all those opposed. Uh, the ayes have it, and membership number is moved to the beginning of the list. So the question is now on the resolution as amended. 
uh, which is resolved that is the sense of the Whistler's business meeting that any site selection ballot that does not contain a membership number, name, signature, or address that meets the country of origin's requirements should be counted as no preference. Is there a debate, uh, further debate on that? Yeah. Request for yeah. What's Yeah. Let him get there first. <laughs> Thank you. Hugh Abrams Haldi, he him. What is the effect of declaring of declaring the ballot no preference? Would that result in the entire ballot being thrown out? No, the, the result of declaring it no preference is simply that it doesn't count for site selection. There are a number of current clauses in the Constitution that say under certain circumstances a ballot does not count. For, uh, for site selection, uh, and uh, this would uh, this is basically the sense of the business meeting. This is true. I, uh, I, I hesitate to mention this, but uh, I believe it has been the case in some, in some times that when a ballot does not have a signature on it, but all the other information is correct, that some site selection administrators have taken such ballots and not counted them. Uh, as towards the selection process, that is, they effectively treated them as though they were no preference for a signature ballot without only a signature. For, that's only for purposes of counting yeah, the, the ballots. The, the, you the, still get the supporting members. The person who submits the ballot with the money, well, it's clear in the Constitution, if you've paid the fee, you're a supporting member. There's no question about that. It only uh, affects the selection process as such. Um, yes. I believe you can make a speech against now. On the amendment or? No, we passed the, we, it's passed amended. The We're back on the main motion. that the deputy chair preside. You okay? The microphone is being erratic and we can't seem to make it work reliably. <laughs> I don't know if the other mic is better. Is the other mic better? Is Don speaking in favor? Um, I believe Don is speaking in favor. Otherwise, he... Well, that didn't make it better, that's right. No. Oh, Joni gave us an amendment, but we said we're not taking it. One, two. Mm -hmm. Are we working? Oh. Can't hear you. Oh, hang on. Oh, that's because we're waiting for the mic. We see that. Oh, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, now it's working. Okay, ah, great. My name is Donald Eastlake. Uh -huh. I surrender the chair to the deputy chair and will not, don't plan to resume it until this question is decided. I just wish to make a very brief speech uh, in favor, uh, which is that I do not believe that we should allow anonymous or semi-anonymous uh, people that don't provide enough information to get back to them or don't provide a name or haven't signed uh, to affect site selection. And I would reiterate my comment that in the past, uh, ballots that were not signed, there's just a blank, no signature, have not been counted. They, there's a membership purchased by them. It's, you know, 
that's all fine, but uh, they, they have not, and it just basically just clarifies and uh, extends this precedent a little bit. Thank you. Speech against? Seeing none, and is there not any more, any more speeches? There David? There's a speech in there. Oh. I think Lisa has her hand up. Well, several people, okay. but it's hard for me to see the I back know, of the room. It's really hard to see. The, the, the lights make it difficult. At least Dave stands out. <laughs> well, uh, Dave McCarty, um, the, the one point that I'd like to make is the Constitution deals with people buying memberships uh, for themselves and for other people. And in the case of for other people, until they are in the hands of another person, they are considered, as our Constitution calls them, non-natural people. It is a requirement for the Worldcon to figure out if somebody voting in our site selection and in our Hugos is a natural person. And if we are absent address information to contact them, that is always given historically, I believe it's only a, a failure of our imagination that somebody would not give it, that it's not in the Constitution as required. We need this information to be able to tell if they are real people so that their vote should be, can be counted. And if we cannot determine that they're real people and we don't have a mechanism to find them in a timely enough manner, then they should be counted as no preference. Speech against? Speech against the resolution? Um, ben, you've already spoken. Is there a? There's a hand over on the left. Oh, there you out in front. OK. The question has been called. There's a hand on the left. Oh, I'm sorry. He called a question. Okay. Um, is, how many people would like to speak? Is everyone aware that there are five, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think, people who want to still speak? All those in favor of calling the, uh, uh, of proceeding to vote immediately, raise your hand. All those opposed? I don't believe we have two thirds in favor. Therefore, uh, we will continue to debate. How much time is left? 30 seconds for the resolution, one minute 45 against. Okay, we're on speech against. I move to, uh, I move to extend the debate. Yeah. Extend debate. I move to, Judy Bemis, she, her, I move to extend debate. By how much? By six minutes. All right, it's been moved and all those in favor of extending debate? All those opposed? I don't believe we have two thirds in favor. We, the, the, the nays have it and we will not extend debate. Um, all right, speech against, yes, oh, behind with the top hat, yes. We are extending the bill. Alan Tipper, see him. So, as, as my reading of this is, uh, I don't think that, at least with the current wording, it logically works. As, as worded, it, it would require either a ballot to have either a name or a signature or a membership number or an address. One of these things, not all of these things. I believe the intent was to have it have all of these things. Yeah, that, that is exactly like it. I, 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 would, I would indeed like to move to amend and, and that uh, the wording, wording be cleared, cleared up, up, in, up in some manner. Um, and are probably simply changing the I, or to an and yes. would be the simplest way. The, chair, the, the chair, chair would agree that changing or to and would accomplish what you wish. Yep. Therefore... The amendment is to change or to and. Is there any debate? All those in favor, raise one hand. All those opposed, raise one hand. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And we will change or to and. All right. We're still on. Uh, we're, we back. we're back to a speech in favor. Yes. 30 seconds remain. Um, in the back.
uh, Stephen Desjardins, he, him. Uh, section 450, 451 gives each bidding committee the right to make a record of the name and address of every voter. If the name and address aren't present, then that compromises the rights of the voting committee. I believe that is intended to allow them to help verify that voters are natural persons. Can you bring your badge up here, sir? Just be, yeah. you get your name. Speech against? Um, yes. It should be a lowercase d and a capital J. It's incorrect. Okay, lowercase d, capital J, J A R D. Heather Rose Jones, she, her. I believe that more violence would be done to the spirit of Worldcon by making a change like this that is intended to address a highly specific situation than the violence that would be done by going through with the situation that people are trying to prevent. Thank you. Speech in favor. Nine, Kevin, nine Kevin nine Stanley, seconds. he, him. I think I should point out to people, although I am in favor of this resolution, that it is only a resolution. The business meeting has no right to unilaterally time. order. Time. Time has expired in favor. Mr. Chairman, I would like to have 30 seconds to finish my comment. Is there any objection? All right. Go ahead. Uh, Honorable Chair, this is a resolution. It is not a constitutional amendment. It is a request for advice from the administrator, but the administrator is not bound to follow these in rules. We cannot bind by resolution. We are expressing an opinion as a meeting. I don't think that is actually clear to people. We are not actually changing the rules. We are giving advice to the administrator who is allowed to make such decisions. Time. Thank you. Time. Speech against? 60 seconds remain. I've already spoken back and they have no one else. Is there anyone else who has not spoken who would like to speak against the resolution? Terry, would you like to speak? We don't have much time left. One minute. I won't talk for a minute. I absolutely, I will reiterate this, even this, this is the, gives the incredible appearance of changing the rules in the middle of a controversial vote. And I think that that would do untold violence to WISFIS if we allowed it. There is no time remaining in favor. Speech against. Mr. Yallo. 42 seconds. Ben Yallo, he, him. We have not, of course, verified what the Chinese language version of the instructions were. We don't know what they say. We don't know what we told people, and it was the administering convention that provided the Chinese translation. For all we know, the Chinese translation clearly indicates what is required in a way that does not match the meaning of this resolution as we passed it. And without knowing that, I do not believe we can try and change the instructions to the tellers. Time's expired Time on both having sides. expired. Time having expired. We will proceed to vote on the resolution. All those in favor, please. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't see you behind the pillar. Do you have a, do you have a point of order? No, you cannot do that. Time has expired. Well, yes. Elliot Mitchell again. Uh, I move to postpone this until tomorrow to tr in that, at least in an attempt to avoid. This that, unfortunately yeah. is out of order because it, tomorrow it will be moot. Um, the count, the count will have occurred and it will be too late to, to change it. Yes. What? For what purpose does the member rise? Okay. Come and use the microphone. I cannot hear you. 
And give us your badge so we can see your name, please. Can the secretary unilaterally add an apostrophe to origins, or does that need a full amendment and vote? Please go, proceed quickly. He did. That was the question. It's the typo in origins. Oh, been, that's been handled. The secretary will, 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 will correct grammar and spelling errors. Um, yes, Don. I t yeah, that's already, I actually already took care of that. Uh, I'd like to appeal the decision of the chair concerning the motion to postpone. These no, there's no time limit in this opinion of the business meeting. Uh, the opinion of the business meeting would still be relevant whether it occurs, uh, was expressed today or tomorrow. Very well. Um, I, can, I can understand that. I think I'm, I, I may very well decide to change my ruling and allow that. However, was there a second? I think there was. Second. Um, in that case, we will vote immediately because no time e exists. All those in, in favor, excuse me, what? I, I can't see in the back of the... Yes, now I can see, yeah, sort of. Point of inquiry, if it's appropriate. Was there any information of directions of what language ballot was the predominant, you know, was, was to be considered, oh, would take precedent? I'm yes. sorry, that's debate, and okay. time for debate has no, but, ended. But each ballot in every language that we translated it into said the English language ballot is the official, uh, the official rules. But this was for their okay. convenience only. Ms. Dashoff, if you have a point of order. Point of inquiry, what are the instructions to the tellers if the fields are incomplete at this time? The instructions have, have been that a ballot will be counted as no preference if it does not meet the requirements. This is the, the discussion of the requirements, and we are giving an opinion on what the requirements are. Um, we are voting to postpone. Oh, debate is not allowed. Um, all those in favor of postponing this until tomorrow, please raise one hand. All those opposed, please raise one hand. The nays have it. And uh, we will proceed to vote on the resolution. All those in favor of the resolution, please raise one hand. I expect we're going to go to Serpentine. All those opposed, please raise. Serpentine. Um, I think we better do a serpentine because it's it's although I think is the, this a two thirds or no this is a this is a resolution it only needs a majority and I think there was a majority in favor so but I I'm, would agree but I would not I would argue. not I would not argue if, I, I'd rather just do it let's do a serpentine yeah. all those in favor please stand. <laughs> Forty-seven I thirty no. The ayes have it, and the resolution is adopted. 
Yes. For, for, for what purpose does the member rise? Okay, there you are. I mean, I've got this already. I know you can't see me, but you should certainly hear me. I can. You should know his voice by now. I do. The parliamentary inquiry is, for the record, uh, Honorable Chair, this motion is a resolution expressing an opinion and does not ab actually have an utterly binding effect on the, the administering convention. Is this correct? That's correct, yes. We can't bind the administering convention except in some very strange circumstances. Um, and it's up to the nitpicking and fly specking committee whether they want to make this a resolution of continuing effect. And I hereby return the chair to Mr. Eastlake. Yes. Uh, what, what purpose does the member rise? Um, I just want to thank the uh, membership for their uh, time and advice. I just want to thank the um, business meeting for their time and advice. Tim Sageville, the site selection administrator. Would people like to do a bio break now? Yes. Okay, I promised we'd have one, so we are in a recess for five minutes. Are people ready? Yes. Yes. Call the meeting back to order. <coughs> the next uh, order of business would be E3, which had been started. However, I have received a request from somebody who has a conflict uh, with tomorrow to move up uh, item E11 so that we can be more sure to handle it today. Is there any objection to that? Seeing none, E11 is clear up the definition of public in the artist category forever. <laughs> Perhaps an ambitious short title. And uh, is there an objection to moving that item up? I'll read the item. I see no objection. We'll take up E11. It adds uh, some text to the best fan artist article in the Constitution, which is Article 3317, 3.3.17. And uh, the current wording is, an artist or cartoonist whose work has appeared through publication in semi-pro zines or fanzines or through other public non-professional display, including at a convention or conventions during the previous year. The proposal is to add text to that so it include, would include posting on the internet, in online or print-on-demand shops, or in other settings not requiring a fee to see the image in full resolution. So just adding those words that I just read. The uh, time limit was set, the preliminary business meeting, to eight minutes. Does anybody wish to debate this amendment to the Constitution? Uh-huh, back on the right. I have a point of information, but let her go for that. Yes. Uh, as I stated name. in name, oh, sorry, Terry Ash, she, her. Go ahead. As I stated in 2019 when I made this motion, uh, the current wording of the Constitution is actively ambiguous, uh, which leaves uh, the definition of public up to any given current Hugo administrator. The purpose of this amendment is to limit ambiguity and provide uh, a more expansive and concrete definition of public and at this point, delaying uh, adoption of this motion will create a further problem for fan artists in the uh, Hugo category for now a couple of years. Uh, it's, I'll defer to that as a speech in favor, a speech against. I have a parliamentary oh, inquiry. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I have a question either for the maker or the chair. 
the wording that says not requiring a fee, if a fan artist or a, if an artist who we believe to be a fan artist donates work to a committee, either a con committee or a bid committee, and you require payment of a membership to receive those publications, does that defeat the purpose of this request? Is, uh, uh, I believe. Uh, well, I, I might, my answer would be that this, uh, right. this merely expands the conditions under which somebody can be a best fan artist. It says, his work appeared in certain ways. This expands the list of a number of ways. Uh, the, so I don't. The end, sorry, at the end language of the amendment is because there are places on the, it's, it is more specifically to, geared to the internet. Oh, I understand the rationale, yeah. But did I answer your question? Um, I believe you did in the, in the you. basically you read it as written. Yeah. There is a speech against this. This is a speech against Jerry okay. Sullivan, she, okay. her. Um, the inclusion of in online or print on demand shops, but in online shops means art that is for sale. And just because you can see it for free doesn't make it fan art. And saying that art that is for sale is fan art and eligible for fan art, I believe goes against the spirit of what fan art is. Uh, okay. There's speech in favor. Uh, I beg your person there. Okay. Go ahead. Jonathan Lennox, he, him. Uh, just to respond to that, uh, fan art has always been in convention art shows. Art in convention art shows has always been for sale. Sorry. Uh, Jonathan Lennox, yeah, I was saying that uh, the traditional definition of fan art has always included art in convention art shows. Art and convention art shows has always been for sale. You could see it at the convention, but if you wanted to keep it, you had to pay. Um, I think that saying having the same rule apply on the internet is perfectly fine in keeping with the spirit of fan art. Can you bring your badge up so speech we can get your name? Uh, speech against. Uh, yeah. John Lennox. Dave Thank you. Dave McCarty. Um, I, I believe the traditional definition of fan art, fan art is art that is made available for fanish activities like fanzines and convention use, etc. All art is professional art. It's making it available for use for fanish activity that makes it fan art and thus a fan artist. Uh, speech in favor. Yeah. Terry Neal, she, her. In our current um, environment of having lots of fan art online, um, which is made by fans for fans to celebrate fanish things, um, it takes it, it expands it beyond conventions and fanzines. And I think that fan art on the internet needs to be celebrated with the fan art Hugo. Speech against. Seeing none, are there any further speeches? Uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, move to call the question. Is there a second? All those in favor of still, uh, sorry, all those who still wish to speak, please raise your hand. You can see how many people still wish to speak. Thank you. Uh, the, all those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? There being more than two thirds in favor, uh, the question is called. Proceed to vote on the amendment. Uh, all of those in favor of the uh, clear up the definition of public in the art artist categories forever. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. So uh, that's actually a ratification. So this will be text will be added to the Constitution. We now go back to E3. Short title, Clarification of Worldcon Powers. It simply involves changing the word the to there. So instead of saying Worldcon Committee is responsible for all matters concerning the awards, to say they're responsible for all matters concerning their awards. <coughs> so a Worldcon Committee cannot uh, 
retroactively change earlier awarded Hugo's, for example. Um, I don't think it substantively changes. I think it's well, just it doesn't change. It, it's it's clarified, so we say. Okay. okay. It's nitpicking. It's it, well, yes. So there had been a question about the interpretation. Yes, sir. Well, is anybody object if I continue to preside? Uh, yeah, not. Move to move to accept unanimously. Well, is there any objection to accepting this amendment, ratifying it? Seeing none, the uh, E3 is uh, adopted, uh, and the, uh, that amendment to the Constitution is, is ratified. So that change will occur and be made to the Constitution. Uh, next one is also nitpicking and fly specking. Uh, this is basically, there, under the current rules, there are circumstances under which a NASFIC administers the selection of another NASFIC. And should there be some questions, uh, there's currently no provision for any kind of business meeting at a NASFIC, and this would provide that there could be a business meeting restricted solely to considering matters related to the NASFIC's selection of another NASFIC, cases where the timing of the uh, world cons has worked out that way. In particular, the text that would be added to the Constitution is as follows. In the case of administer, the, in, the, in the case the administering convention is a NASFIC, this is concerning site selection, it shall hold a business meeting to receive the results of the site selection voting and to handle any other business pertaining directly and only to the selection of the future NASFIC convention. This meeting shall have no other powers or duties. Uh, is there any debate on this uh, Amendment. This is coming up for ratification. Uh, seeing none, is there any objection to ratifying this amendment to the Constitution? Seeing none, it is ratified and will be. Thank you all. I appreciate you. <laughs> the text, <laughs> text will be added to the Constitution. E5 uh, is a, a problem of numbers. This relates to uh, site selection, and this basically clarifies. Uh, the uh, basically uh, approves of the existing practice. There are circumstances under which a voter does not know their membership number and the way this has been handled in the past because, for example, they are uh, purchasing a supporting membership in the administering convention at the same time they are submitting their vote is that the site selection administrators have been allowed to fill in the membership number on behalf of the voter. Uh, this is the normal practice, and this uh, codifies that. In particular, it adds uh, to 3.11.1. The current text is, final award voting shall be balloted in, in advance of the Worldcon. Postal mail shall always be acceptable. Only WISFUS members may vote. Final award ballots shall include name, address, signature, and membership number spaces to be filled in by the voter. However, this is a new text, however, if the voter does not have their membership number, it may be supplied by the Hugo administrator or their designated staff members. So this, that's in the case where you're doing uh, a member. That's the, no, 3.11.1 is Hugo. Sorry. So the same thing applies to Hugo. Uh, you have to have your uh, provide membership number on the Hugo ballot, and uh, this allows that. Then there's, there's also amends 4.4.1 uh, by adding uh, it says site selection ballots will include designated space for name, signature, address, and membership number. Uh, currently says to be filled in by the voter. The change would be it would just stop there and then say the ballot should be filled in by the voter. However, uh, however if the voter does not have their membership number, it may be supplied by the site selection administrator or their designated staff member. Whereas the change to in, in clause uh, Article 3, rather, of the Constitution related to Hugo's and authorized the Hugo administrator. This change in Article 4 <coughs> authorizes the site selection administrator to add that information. So that's a little bit lengthy, but I think it's, the intent is, hopefully is, uh, was clear from my explanation. Does anybody wish to uh, debate these, this amendment, which is up for ratification? Seeing none, uh, is there any objection to ratifying this amendment? Seeing no objection, E5 is a problem of numbers is ratified, and those changes will be made in the Constitution. Uh, 
E6, short title, The Needs of the One. Great time was set to six minutes. And uh, this is con concerns uh, clause 3.8.7 in the Constitution. The current, currently the clause reads, the committee shall move a nomination from another category to the works default category only if the member has made fewer than five nominations in the default category. Because this is also a nitpicking and fly specking committee. If anybody objects, I can relinquish the chair. This is actually up for ratification, so it's sort of from the previous WorldCon rather than directly from the committee. The proposal is to add clarifying language and to add, insert the words on an individual ballot. So it would read, the committee shall move a nomination on an individual ballot from another category to the works default category only if the member has made fewer than five nominations in the default category. It's really just a clarification of the text, I believe. Anybody wish to uh, debate this oh, amendment up for ratification? Yes. Oh, careful. Judy Bemis, oh. I know that this was debated two years ago, but I believe that usually if something is moved in category, it's because it's not the correct length for um, the category it's being proposed for, or um, the administrator thinks it's a professional artist rather than a fan artist or something like that. Um, I'm not sure we want, I'm not sure what the current practice is on that that's being oh. tried to correct for. I, I guess that the, uh, my interpretation is that the existing text can be interpreted. You can sort of do the nominations, and then if you notice, there have been X nominations on multiple ballots in a particular category for a work where the work, the work because of its written or dramatic presentation length or whatever else, would normally be in a different category. You can then move those nominations. I'm not There's sure whether the current, I'm sorry, where, where, uh, Mr. Where, Chairman, where, I'm not sure whether the current administrators have moved it in the past if there was the I other category either. was already filled or not. So I'm not sure that this clarification needs to be made. Uh, what I was just, okay, let's, well, perhaps we, if we got a speech in favor, that would clarify the need for the uh, amendment. You've also got an administrator who's willing to talk. Yeah, so. Uh, Something. We have a few administrator, I believe, here. Yep. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Dave, Dave McCarty. Yeah. Um, as a as a very recent several time Hugo administrator, I can state categorically that the language in place is how the administrators are currently doing it. It just codifies it in the rules so that newer administrators know how to do things. Um, so if a hundred people put something in the wrong category. Only the 50 that have space in the correct category get their get their nominations moved. The 50 that don't have space in the in the correct category do not get the nominations moved. Speech against. <coughs> uh, Move to call the question. Move the question. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is it moved and seconded to call the question? All those still wishing to speak to the question, please raise your hand. Oh no. Thank you. Never mind. I don't. All those, uh, all those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hand. Thank you, all those opposed. The ayes have it, and more than two thirds in favor. So the question is called. All those in favor of ratifying E6, please raise your hand. Thank you, all those opposed. The ayes, almost unanimous. Uh, the ayes clearly have it. And the uh, constitutional amendment is ratified, and uh, those words will be added to the Constitution. We are now on E7, which is on page 32 in your agenda. Debate time had been set to uh, eight limits, uh, eight minutes. Um, and uh, this is up for ratification. The uh, called, uh, the, that ticket has been punched. 
and it adds text to uh, 3.4.2 as a 3.4.2.1 in the Constitution concerning the best series ca uh, category. So the text to be added would be for finalists in the series category that have previously appeared on the ballot for best series, any installments published in a year prior to that previous appearance, regardless of country of publication, shall be considered to be part of the series previous eligibility and will not count towards the re-eligibility requirement for the current year. Um, does anybody wish to debate this amendment up for ratification? I have an inquiry, parliamentary inquiry. Yeah, go ahead. Cliff Dunn, I noticed that th that, that has a two in the exponent, posi exponent position on the word that. Is that a typographical error? No, if you look at the bottom of page 32, it says that the secretary made an editorial change to the original sec, uh, submission. It was originally which, and it should be that. So I just went ahead and made the change, but I wanted it noted. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, yes, Donnie. Uh, I mean, are you saying that none of the series ever done before is eligible or that only no. works published since the last Can suggestion for eligibility means it has to be absolutely yeah, yeah. new in the current year? I believe we may have somebody who wishes to answer it, try to uh, answer that question. What this said, well, you read the first paragraph. If a work is published in a language other than English and then is published in English, it becomes eligible again once it is published in English. What this is going to do is say, if it was previously published in another language and it is then published in English, it does not count to the requirement that a series which needed a certain amount of additional work to requalify, it will not count towards that requalifying because all that work is prior to the first time it got on the ballot. So this all refers to translated work? Correct. No. Well, that's the, not what I thought. The either. modification re refers to uh, works. Okay, let's let's get this uh, order, please. Uh, let's let's proceed in a somewhat more ordered fashion. Uh, I believe. Mr. Chairman. Yes. What? I I would like to address this. Uh, okay, you can switch. Are you speaking in favor or against? Okay, a speech in favor. Mr. Chairman, I would just like Martin Pine, he, him. I would just like to clarify that this is all, that this is to the section regarding works published outside the United States of America, re-eligibility section, and, would, and is relevant to how we interpret eligibility for works that are first published in foreign countries and are then republished in the United States in the following year. This came up with the Rivers of London series and this would say that if the, even if it was published in England two years ago, it wouldn't count for re-eligibility if it was just published in the United States the previous year. Is there a speech? Because it says regardless of country of publication. Is there a speech against this uh, amendment of ratification? Yes. Uh, sure to state your name. Alan Tipper, he, him. So upon this debate so far, it's become clear to me that, oh, am I not coming through well? Is that better? All right. All right, uh, Alan Tipper, he, him, for those who might not have heard. heard. So uh, with this bit of debate, it's become clear to me that the clarity of this issue is not very good. In other words, that it simply isn't very clear to who, you know, people reading it, what this actually does and what this actually means. As such, I would, I would uh, generally vote against it, it in, and at least to go back to a committee and be re-clarified so the wording could be made more clear and more understandable to the membership. Speech in favor? Uh, Lisa? I call the question. Uh, Moved and seconded to call the question. Those who wish to still speak, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? I'm not 
sure there's two thirds in favor. There's a majority in favor, but not, I don't know if it's two thirds. Uh, so we'll do a serpentine count on the call of the question. Uh, all those in favor of calling the question, please stand. One. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. There are 39 in favor, 14 opposed. There being more than two thirds in favor, the question is called. The question is on re ratification of E7. That ticket has been punched. All those in favor of ratification, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and the amendment to the Constitution is ratified. Text will appear in the Constitution. Next item of business is E8. Short title, title Keeping 5 and 6. Uh, what it does is basically delete a number of provisos. And uh, I would want to clarify, actually it was, was quickly, specifically requested to clarify, uh, that the title, short title might be slightly misleading. Uh, if this is uh, ratified, what it does is remove those provisos, but uh, six, the listing of six eligible nominees would remain in the Constitution. It deletes what, the sunset clause. What it does is it deletes the sunset clause, so we no longer need to re-ratify it uh, the next year. And it also deletes the provision allowing the, uh, that prior to that, uh, that it can be suspended. Uh, yes. Yeah, I do. Kevin Stanley, he, him. Um, Honorable Chair, is the substantive effect of adopting this to re-ratify this motion that would be otherwise up for re-ratification at next year's business meeting one year early? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yes. Go ahead with the inquiry. Winton, Winton Matthews. I've got a little, I'm a little bit confused because the first line says to amend by deleting and adding. Well, that's I don't just, see that, anything to add. That's just boilerplate. That's just, yeah, that's just boilerplate. Okay, thank you. There is, in fact, no added, there is no added text, only deleted text. I'll take, I'll take that out of the... Uh, uh, okay. So uh, basically, it's sort of like a one-year earlier re-ratification. Re uh, anybody wish to speak uh, to the uh, motion? Uh, Perry on? Uh, she asked it should be in favor. Uh, you in favor? I actually think it's neutral. Um, my understanding is that Perry this is a Lurie. constitutional amendment. Oh, Perry and Lori she, her. Uh, constitutional amendment, and as such, would need to be ratified by next year's no. It has been. Oh, it has already been passed. Okay, yes. never mind. This is never mind. Speech against? <laughs> oh, speech in favor. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Rafe Richards. Thank you, Rafe. Uh, Rafe Richards, he, him. 
Honourable Chairman, um, as a person semi-responsible for this uh, from Dublin, I um, thought I would like to speak to it first. Given that, in effect, this is re-ratification a year early, you may ask why it came up. Uh, I refer you to the minutes from Dublin. I promise it made sense at the time. Um, five and six was originally passed as a packet of measures to combat slating in the wake of attempts to slate the Hugos. It was successful. There have been no further successful attempts to slate the Hugos. I have seen it suggested that because of this, we no longer need five and six. All I can say is, I would like to believe that the internet, the world, and fandom is now a place of peace and harmony, <laughs> where no one will ever attempt to slate the Hugos again. I would like to say this. I would be lying. You do not build defenses, see them succeed, and start dismantling them until you find the point at which they fail. This society does not make changes quickly. We cannot pivot on the spot. We have built something, it works, and we should keep it. Let us spare the next business meeting from having the re-ratification debate and keep five and six now. Thank you. Is there a... Call the question. Uh, is there... Do you want to speak? Uh, yeah. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Oh, sorry. There yeah, has speech, been debate. Speech against. Yes. Do a speech against. So, state your name. Uh, Joshua Cronengold. If it is a question of uh, measures against slating, five and six has proved um, generally irrelevant. The question really is do we prefer having six candidates or five? That's the only question about whether we should do this. If it is a matter of um, if we like six candidates, we should keep six candidates. If we like five, we should like keep five. It won't affect slating one way or another as long as we have EPH. And five and six, we was proven to not be effective against slating in general. We needed other measures. In the meanwhile, I would like to call the question. I move to call the question. Uh, okay. What? Not in order to call the question after speaking. Uh, I call the question. Okay. Second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been moved and seconded to call the question. All those who still wish to speak, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? There being two-thirds in favor, the question is called. Proceed to vote on a ratifying E8. All those in favor of ratification, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and the change E8 is ratified. So the provisional proposals will be stricken from the Constitution as shown there. Okay, next business item is E9. Um, uh, <laughs> the time, debate time was set to 10 minutes at the preliminary business meeting. Um, so this changes the date uh, for eligibility. Current text in the, is the World Con Committee shall conduct a poll to select the finalists for the award voting. This is about the Hugo Awards. Each member of the administering Worldcon or immediately preceding Worldcon as of the end of the previous calendar year shall be allowed to make up to five equally weighted nominations in every category. The proposal is to strike out as of the end of the previous calendar year and insert as of January 31st of the current calendar year. Uh, does anybody wish to debate this amendment? Uh, speech in favor? Yeah. No. In, when you, uh, is a slight, as a piece of information, if the microphone is turned off and you turn it on, it takes a second for it to actually come on. Okay, so, there we go. So you turn it on and wait a second and then speak. What? Oh no. Okay, we can start the time on me now. Okay. Uh, Terry Neal, she, her. And as I, I have never been a Hugo administrator, but I have worked on the Hugo uh, 
uh, in the Hugo area. And if we do this, if we change it to back to January 31st, then you cannot open nominations in January. You have to wait until afterwards. Bear that in mind. It was supposed to have been a speech in favor, I don't think. I think I was a speech against. Uh, oh, I'm but, sorry. So what, we not, let's get a speech in favor now. Uh, if. Given the, the uh, hey, oh, Perry and Lurie, she, her. Uh, given the hectic nature of the end of the calendar year, uh, it's easy for people to forget to mail in their, their, their check or go online and do their credit card or whatever to become a member in time for the deadline so that they'll be able to nominate. Um, I don't think this does any harm. I don't think you can, I think you could open nominations earlier, just more people will become eligible in that month. So I don't think that's a problem. Uh, any other speeches against? Yep. Uh, oh, oh, yes, you. <laughs> Elspeth Kovar, we had a standing family rule. You can give a book as a gift. You are not allowed to read it before giving it as a gift which might mean that I would give mom something on December 25th. She would insist on getting to read it first. I would not have time to read it and nominate it before the end of the calendar year. Buy two copies. Oh, oh okay. I can broke uh, tin most of the time. She's now dead. It doesn't that's matter. Good. That was just a snide remark on my part. Uh, uh, you get lost? <laughs> sure. A uh, speech against? Uh. Um, the longer we allow people to buy memberships before, so that they can nominate, the shorter the time period from the time the nominations come out until the deadline for voting for the Hugo Awards. And we need to give people as much time to vote the items that have been nominated. To so I think I think, you know, we need to be fair to both both timelines. A speech in favor. Honorable Chairman Kevin Stanley, he, him, I think this might be close to the first substantive debate I've actually made, uh, but primarily it's a case of this, responding to one of the previous speakers, this deadline change has nothing to do with when you receive your book or when you can nominate it. By what time do you have to be a member of either the current Worldcon or of the previous Worldcon in order to be eligible to make that nomination when nominations begin, whether they begin on January 1st or, or February 15th or April 1st, if we uh, are getting silly. So this only applies to when you have to be a member, not when the work was published or when you can cast your ballot. Thank you. I, and, and thus, I'm actually in favor of it. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, speech against. Uh, okay. Seeing none, any further speeches in favor? Uh, is there anybody who wishes to speak? Nobody wishing to speak will proceed to a vote. All those in favor of uh, ratifying this amendment, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? The ayes have it overwhelmingly, and uh, the amendment is ratified. Uh, the chair notes that the valiant tellers have returned. <laughs> Albeit by a strange route. <laughs> Uh, do you have a report? Would you like to give that, or you want me to give it? I, you, can, you can read it. Use uh, the mic. <laughs> this is for the Mark Protection Committee election, the ballots of which were cast earlier in this meeting. Um, uh, Sharon Sparsky, she, her. Uh, this is a report of the Mark Protection Committee count. There were 67 ballots received, two were totally blank, so we counted those as no preference with 65 valid ballots and 33 
is the general needed for a majority. As we were going on, more no preference ballots occurred since not everyone um, had a one through nine vote for every candidate. The three candidates winning the three-year terms in alphabetical order are Linda Denneroff, Donald E. Eastlake III, and Dave McCarty. The three candidates winning the two-year terms in alphabetical order are Judy Bemis, Joni Brill Dashoff, and Mike Wilmoth. Thank you. Thank you for your report. Thanks to the tellers for their efforts. Yeah. Honorable Chair, I ask unanimous consent that the ballot that the tellers be instructed to destroy the ballots. Okay. Is there any objection? Okay. Fifty cents. Hearing none, the tellers are instructed to destroy the ballots. I know. That's why. Fifty cents. Ah. Yes, checked. So next item of business is uh, E10. Short title, Preserving Supporting Membership Sales for Site Selection, moves to add to the list of constitution uh, and a new clause, uh, clause in section 1.5. No read it first. No convention shall terminate the sale of supporting memberships prior to the close of site selection. I believe that's been a practice, but uh, this would insert that into constitution. Is there a, what? Yes. Uh, I will call for speech in favor. What? I will call for speech in favor. You okay? We have a speech, uh, offer of a speech in favor, which is the right thing to go to next. Go right ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Cliff Dunn. Um, as the initial mover of this, this came up as a result of Dublin hitting a sellout point in the weeks leading up to the Dublin Convention. Uh, they ceased selling attending memberships, which is not an issue from, this pers from the point of view of site selection but there was some concern that they were also going to shut off supporting memberships, which would constrain the ability of people to vote in site selection up until oh. obviously the close of uh, voting. So this is in line with practice, but it, to avoid a situation where a convention has to shut off attending membership sales and also decides to shut off supporting sales. Thank you. Is there a speech against? Uh, I know, I know we're running out of time. No, we're not. We have uh, 16 minutes, plenty of time. Uh, Kevin Stanley, he, him, I also am in favor of this. And something that this particular crowd of people who are, generally speaking, very familiar with process may not be aware of is that many world cons are unaware of this practice and have to be told it every single year. This merely puts it into the Constitution so that site selection administrators don't run afoul of their own committees not realizing what practice has been, and you can just point at it and they say, you've got to provide a way to do it. Thank you. Uh, any further speech on this uh, constitutional amendment up for ratification? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you, those opposed? Is that unanimous consent? Uh, yes, it passes unanimously. So the, this uh, is ratified and made part of the Constitution. We do currently theoretically have uh, 15 minutes, but we've conveniently, because we handled item E11 earlier, this is E10, finished all of the items up for ratification. And the next item of business would normally be uh, one of a new constitutional amendments, which has a relatively long uh, time limit. This is more common for newer items. So uh, is there any objection to uh, a to uh, <laughs> to be, I guess uh, any objection to uh, calling for the uh, announcements and then adjourning? Uh, seeing no objections, that's what we're going to do. Does anybody wish to make any announcements? Yes. Um, I note that one of the people in the audience is Ruth Sachter, and her birthday is today. I would like to wish her a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Uh, <laughs> any other announcements? Any other announcements? Yes, sir.
Is Nana um, Amra or Olaf Rockney here today? And if they are, can they come see me after? Any other announcements? Uh, hearing none and by the prior consent, we are saying adjourned until tomorrow morning. Yay. At 12.17.